Hello and thank you for joining me on another video by Hannah McAndrew, skin specialist based in South Wales. I'm also a qualified science teacher and during the UK lockdown I've actually gone back to my previous job which is what I did before I ever got into the beauty industry which is in pharmacy so I'm actually working back in community pharmacy full time so I'm finding time on the weekends to catch up with all of my video content and training content for you. Now I get asked a lot about anti-aging, what is the best treatment for anti-aging, um, you know, what is the best ingredient for anti-aging and there's a few different ways that we can approach this. About anti-aging, what is the best treatment for anti-aging, what is the best ingredient to use at home for anti-aging and with aging it's it is quite straightforward um, but it can also be slightly complicated so I've made some slides for you uh, all about collagen. So if we're going to look at collagen as a way of treating ageing, then we need to know what collagen is first. So it's a protein in the skin that gives it its bounce and its snap back. I think of, all, think of it almost as like a spring in a mattress. You have your two pictures below of a young skin on the left and your aged skin then on the right. So you can see you've got the epidermis at the top, which is where your sort of outermost skin cells are, and they look like little bricks in the picture, each individual skin cell there. So your epidermis is the layer that we can see and feel, it's the topmost layer. Underneath that then you have your dermis, which is where all of your collagen fibres are stored. So we can see in, the, in both skins the collagen is what appears green there. It's like uh, springs that give the skin the support and the volume. Underneath then we have the fat layer or the subcutaneous layer, which we don't really treat in the beauty industry. And underneath that then we have the muscle cells, which is what um, I think a lot of people know about Botox, relaxing your muscles in your face to stop you from frowning. Um, so that's where your muscles are, is below all of those layers there. So as we can see, as we get older, collagen will decrease in quantity. So in a young skin, it's around 75% of the skin. And as we get older, we'll lose quite a lot of collagen there. And I think of it then as like your spring in your mattress isn't there, so the actual top of the mattress then is just going to dip into that gap, and that is what uh, creates a wrinkle then. There are other reasons as to why we get wrinkles to do with um, medical conditions and things like that, but primarily if you're seeing wrinkles on somebody's skin it is due to a, a collagen loss. And how does that happen then? I've got ageing on the slide there because there's just a general passing of time where the collagen is broken down, remodeled, broken down, remodeled, the same as everything else in the skin. And then that can obviously, as you repeat that process more and more and more, there's more chance of faults happening. So that's one theory as to why we lose collagen as we get older and everything kind of just slows down and doesn't work as well as we age. You also have UVA. So UVA is the ray that comes from the sun that can get through glass. It's there all year round and because it can get through glass you are exposed to it even indoors. So it's really important that we are wearing our sunscreen. In fact 80% of the wrinkles that you see on somebody's face are due to UVA damage. Prevention is very, um, prevention really is better than cure. So please, please, please wear your SPF broad spectrum every single day, even in the winter, even if you are indoors. And that's going to help you the most when it comes to trying to prevent wrinkles. Free radicals then. So free radicals are found not only from UV, but also high energy sources of things like smoking, pollution, um, high intensity visible light, so things like laptop screens and things, heaters, like infrared heaters, will all give off free radicals. They're also found in things like processed foods, microwave meals, etc. Free radicals contribute somewhat to collagen loss, but not as much as UVA. Like I said before, UVA is about 80%. Another 10% then will be due to free radical damage, like smoking. Another 10% then will just be due to your natural uh, aging process. So the good thing is most of the wrinkles that we see on somebody's face are due to environmental damage, which means that they can in fact be reversed. We can't reverse somebody's true genetic aging passing of time, unfortunately, not yet anyway. So how can we prevent the damage? caused by the environment? Well, the answer is really, really simple. You wear your SPF broad spectrum every day. So look on the back, you're looking for your star rating and that will tell you how much UVA is blocked by that particular SPF. So you're looking for five stars. Also, that needs to be reapplied every two hours, if not every hour. 
on the face. Now that can be a little bit troublesome for people who wear makeup, but a lot of mineral makeups have a physical at broad spectrum SPF in them also, so it's easier than ever to be protecting your face from the sun. Things like wearing a hat if you are going out and about, and trying to limit your exposure during peak times between midday and 3pm for example. Not exposing yourself to free radicals is another big one, so try and lead a healthy lifestyle. Please don't smoke, please don't eat processed foods, or limit the quantity. Um, you can also take in lots of antioxidants to prevent damage from the free radicals. So things like vitamin C, green tea, fresh coffee is also a really good source of antioxidants. Berries and just general you know, fruits and vegetables are really going to help as well. And with, as far as ageing goes, there's nothing that we can really do to um, slow down time, unfortunately. So there's no preventative measure on that front. Now, there are ways that we can actually replace collagen that's been lost. So if the skin's already been damaged due to UV or to free radical damage, then we can indeed make more collagen, which is really exciting. So there are certain ingredients that we can use. So I've got the chemical pictures on the on the screen here, but you don't really need to know um, what they look like. It's just just for a little bit of um, bit of content for you. Retinoids, all the vitamin A family, is clinically proven to uh, increase collagen in the skin. Also, AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids, and there's less evidence for peptides, but there is some evidence that peptides as well, applying those to the skin, would increase collagen production. You don't really need to know the mechanisms of how all these things work, but I think it's important to know that if a cream is containing something like pro-collagen or collagen or hydrolyzed collagen, that isn't actually going to make the skin make more collagen. Back to this slide here, we can see how big these collagen fibres are. If you're using a cream that's got collagen in it, it's not going to get through the epidermis down to the dermis, which is where it needs to be. Okay. You have got cells called fibroblast cells, which are in the dermis, there, which actually make the collagen, and they need certain kind of raw materials, which they'll get from your diet to make collagen, so make sure you are eating a healthy diet. But it's good to know that the following ingredients can actually stimulate the fibroblast to make more collagen. So we've got your retinoids, that's like your vitamin A, your retinol, your tretinoins, etc., Please, please, please seek the advice of a skincare specialist when you embark on a, an active skincare routine. Anything that you can buy in a store won't have the ingredient in a high enough concentration to actually penetrate uh, to the level that we need to actually increase collagen. What you'll find with your shop-bought creams is that they literally sit on top and fill the wrinkles in superficially. So it'll be a very short-lived result with those types of anti-aging creams. Things like retinoids, AHAs, peptides are all rejuvenation ingredients and they are therefore going to teach the skin, stimulate that fibroblast to produce collagen exactly where it's needed. And that process takes around four to ten weeks and it can actually carry on for months as well. So any result that you see with an anti-aging cream should be long term. If something's decreasing wrinkles in a day, it's probably a superficial result. It's just space filling the wrinkles that you're seeing on the face there. AHAs or alpha hydroxy acids, you've got glycolics, uh, lact lactic and citric acid that are mainly used in skincare. They're blended, they are acid based, so again really important that you seek the um, advice of a skincare pro who knows what concentration they need to be used in, what pH is not going to irritate the skin. All of these ingredients are active, so it's really, really important that we don't overstimulate because that can cause more sensitivity issues in certain skins, and which is why I think a lot of people shy away from skincare and want to go more down the treatment route. But really, you need to be doing both. You need to be giving the skin those ingredients it needs at home and then going to the salon for your treatments, which also make collagen. So let's have a little look at the treatments that we can be having to increase collagen production. Then there's quite a few. Most of them work by some sort of trauma on the skin. So they're going to injure the skin ever so slightly in that dermal layer, which is going to make the fibroblast think, oh, you know, I, I've been injured, I need to make more collagen to, to heal myself. 
So that would be how microneedling would work, for example. You're literally puncturing the skin just ever so slightly, not deep enough to bleed, but enough for the skin to think it's been injured and therefore produce more collagen. The same with peels. You know, you're know, you stimulating the skin, making it slightly angry, causing inflammation, which is then going to um, cause the fibroblast to make more collagen. The same with lasers and IPL treatments. The same with radiofrequency treatments which just kind of warm up the dermis, again, to make the body think that it's been injured. Red light is completely non-invasive. You can get it in a canopy form with LED, lots of little LEDs that give out a certain wavelength of light. And that wavelength of light is clinically proven to just stimulate the fibroblast to make more collagen. So that's a nice non-invasive, non-injury way of making collagen then is with your red light therapy. But you do need to be having two to three treatments a week of that to see results. And down in the bottom right, then we have our injectables. I don't mean Botox and fillers because obviously they're not making collagen at all. I mean, some therapists will inject things like growth factors, sometimes from your own blood plasma, back into the skin, again, to make it think it's been injured to make more collagen. I have read around the evidence for this, and there isn't actually that much more evidence that this works over, say, something like microneedling, or if the injury was just caused alone, um, rather than actually injecting substances in at the same time. Okay, so I think the jury's out on that one there, but some people say that they get a result from doing that. Really important if you are going to go and have one of these treatments that you have it from a qualified professional because there are lots of things that can go wrong as you can imagine. And it's also really important that we are using those lovely ingredients at home in between treatments to not only sustain the result but to improve the result. Um, the more kind of raw materials you can give your skin to, in order to make the collagen over the four to ten weeks or even up to six months following treatment, you need to be giving your skin the ingredients that it needs. Now the process of making collagen actually takes quite a long time and the reason for that is we can see in this diagram here how massive collagen is when we think about the little building blocks coming from our diet to make the polypeptides which then get wound together to make the collagen molecule, they then get bound into fibrils and all of those fibrils get joined together to make your actual collagen fibres and then the collagen gets wound together um, in like a spring form in the dermis, which is what gives it its, its tensile strength. This takes weeks, if not months, and it actually requires, as well as your raw materials, it actually requires vitamin C as well. So it's really important that whatever skincare you use contains quite a lot of vitamin C. Um, vitamin C can be quite difficult to get into the skin, so ideally take it in dietary forms as well. And also, again, shop-bought skin cares um, don't tend to have high enough concentrations in to get to the layers where it's needed. So if you are using a cosmeceutical skin care, so something like Nimue, which is the brand of my choice, but there are other cosmeceutical brands out there, then at least you know then that you're getting every single ingredient that you need to sustain the result of your professional treatment at home. And I think the biggest thing to take from this is that prevention really, really is... Uh, better than cure. So if you're thinking about 80% of the wrinkles being due to sun damage, then really, really important that we are using sunscreen broad spectrum with a five star UVA filter every single day, even indoors and even in the winter. That is the best anti-aging cream that you will ever buy. And also stay away from your shop bought uh, pro collagen creams because they don't actually make collagen. Um, they just superficially sit on the top of the epidermis and fill in little fine lines and wrinkles to make you look a little bit healthier. <laughs> so hopefully that's enlightened you as to ways in which we can improve collagen production. There are other reasons as to why our skin can look aged, which I'll cover on another video. But for now, thank you very much for joining me and I hope to see you on another Hannah McAndrew video again soon.